start it. Okay, welcome everyone and Happy New Year. It is January 2nd, 2019, and this is the teaching and learning call. Uh, my name is Tricia Gordon. I'm at the University of Virginia, and I'm facilitating today's call um, specifically around Ajira Palooza. So happy to see all of you back. Um, for the new year, and uh, hope you guys had a great holiday break. And I would like to invite any announcements that we have from anyone. See, Wilma doesn't, it doesn't, there you go. I see your audio now. Hello, happy new hey. year. Happy new year. Do you have Happy New Year. Year! Happy New Year, Laura and Laura <laughs> and everybody. Um, do you have any announcements for us, Lama? No, I am fresh back from vacation and waiting through a sea of email, so okay. <laughs> I have nothing new <laughs> for today. Gotcha. That's fine. Um, I guess the only thing to mention is Sakai Camp is at the end of this month, and uh, is it is, is registration still open for that? Yes, well, registration is still open. Now the hotel room block has closed, um, but you may still be able to get a room. It just won't be um, at the room rate for the. Um, oh the conference uh, but if if there's interest and in, um, let me know contact me directly and I'll, I'll see if I can put you in touch with the folks at the hotel to see if there's any chance of, of extending the deadline I'm not quite sure I haven't um, gone down that road with them but um, but if anybody is still looking to make a room reservation at the at the oh, Sakai Camp Hotel let me know and I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, but registration is still open and, and you guys are, are more than welcome to attend. It should be a really good meeting. It's at the end of this month, um, the uh, 27th through the 30th, I believe. Right, okay, great, thank you. And uh, with no further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on into the Jirapalooza. We may not use all of our time um, this morning, uh, but Laura, Sarah, and Tiffany did submit uh, several jurors for us to look at. And we're going to start with some of yours, Laura. I muted your microphone, FYI, so you'll need to unmute it to come back on. And uh, I guess I can share my uh, screen, so give me a second to set that up. And while I'm getting set up, I will go ahead and paste the first JIRA link into the chat so you guys can be heading on over there to take a look. Um, this is a grade book JIRA about reverting the action of setting grade items to zero. And I will let Laura um, jump on and let us know all right i'm trying to get this thing open so that it doesn't close all my other tabs um but basically um let's see if this is the specific one i'm thinking of yeah so at the end of uh at the end of grading for a specific grade item um of course it's nice to have our faculty uh, force a zero into those grade cells so that um, a missed a missed uh, assignment or quiz or anything uh, counts against them. Otherwise, of course, if those cells are empty, then it doesn't count against the students, essentially excused. Um, but it is a great, it would be a great service to faculty if we had a simple undo button. Um, every do should have an undo. Um, particularly when it affects a student's grade. So we have had faculty in the past. Now this this particular JIRA concerns a specific grade item, but of course there's also set all empty items to zero for the course grade as well. And I think that might be included here in one of the other JIRAs I've got. 
Um, that's something that people have tripped over several times where it's midway through the semester, they have all their grade items listed in the grade book, they go to the course grade and ask the grade book to set all the ungraded items to zero and boom, everybody's got an F. And it's not something that you can easily undo. So this, this particular JIRA is for a specific grade item to undo, but I think there's also a JIRA out there to set an undo for the course grade in general um, that kind of gives a sweeping zero to everybody's blank cells. So that's what this one is for. This is for the grade item itself. There's a nice little short, it's probably a GIF in here that shows um, how it currently works. But nobody's really touched it in, gosh, this was last, other than my comment, um, this really hasn't been touched in a, over a year. And I know it's something people have been asking for. So that's my plug. Okay, sorry, I've been fiddling around trying to get my screen sharing going. <laughs> Um, and so we're looking for, we've got 11 votes on this issue already, apparently. Um, nobody's working on it. Let me get logged in. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see my screen or not at this point. Yeah, we see it now. Okay. Yep. So basically, we're looking for an undo option. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Now, it, the warning sign says, warning, if you do this, you cannot undo this. But that just means you can't currently automatically undo it. Of course, you can overwrite any of those zeros that appear by clicking into the cell and just typing in a new a new um, grade but mm. an undo button would be most most welcome that's interesting and i i don't think we have any developers on the call today to advise us on on the feasibility of of undoing that but um <laughs> uh, since I'm sure this this change goes into the database, and then yeah, so it would have to um, be an immediate undo. Nothing else could have happened in between. So maybe what we'll do um, after talking through this is just put out an email to include with developers, um, like Steve Swinsburg, commonly. Uh, and Earl sometimes, but Steve more often will comment on, you know, this looks like this could be an easy thing, or this looks like this could be, I would estimate, 20 hours. And then it might be another situation where we just kind of look at it as a community and say, okay, well, we feel it's important, so we'll toss some money at it, or, mm -hmm. you know, however we want to handle it. But right. hopefully it's not too difficult to fix, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I also do not know, but yeah, maybe in an email or joining the core team call, getting it on the agenda for the core team and, and getting input that way could also be a way. Well, Laura, the, Laura. this is Laura G. This is Laura G. And so uh, one of the outcomes of the Jira Palooza, and I'd be happy to do this, is to uh, write a comment that it that it has been reviewed by the teaching and learning group. And then with whatever you know, whatever our consensus or questions remaining are, we can put that in our comment as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, I guess I can um, speak to Terry Golightly, who asks for the process for prior prioritizing these JIRA projects. Um, unless you want to take that up, Tricia. Um, no, please, please go oh, ahead. Sure, okay. Well, uh, to my knowledge, um, because I participate on Mondays, um, Monday, we have a JIRA triage where uh, there's a call in and we look at um, all the new JIRAs usually that have come back, come in in the last seven days. You know, that meeting is not very well attended at all. I mean, if it weren't for Sean, um, Sean's last name, Foster, right, of Western Ontario, it wouldn't be, 
it wouldn't be happening at all because he is just methodical and um, devoted to ha having those calls. Um, and so I join him sometimes, Wilma or Earl, when they can get away and um, hardly anybody else. But what we do is we make sure there's enough information and then we open them. And to Terry's point, um, yeah, I think developers do just read over them and think I could do this or I could do that unless there's, um, you know, they, they can also um, review the JIRAs with the number of votes, which is why it's important to vote on JIRAs, as uh, Tiffany has also put, put in the chat, um, to, to vote on them. And then reviews like this, making comments on them, I think that just elevates them higher in the, in the developers' minds that this would be a really good thing. But um, Tricia, your, um, your comment about uh, having it um, put on the agenda in the core meeting also uh, helps give it more visibility. And I think, is this right, Tricia, the way the core team is meeting now is um, the agenda items have someone from all the meetings that happen in the week sort of give a report? That's correct. That, at least that has been requested, and I think many of the um, facilitators of group meetings are doing that so um, as they're able and so I'm doing that on you know the week following a TNL call which we don't have every week so I don't I don't attend the core team meetings every week to give that update but yeah that would be a good venue uh, and a good uh, way for us to um, raise these issues and bubble them up to the to the top for awareness and and comment and to prioritize yeah well getting back to this current jira what would you like me to put on the uh on the comment for the jira what what does the teaching and learning group think about um let's see this one we're reviewing right now is the three one right three three one three, one three one zero and um tiffany put a good suggestion to maybe have a button to set all zeros to blanks that might be you know and and this would have to be discussed because there might be legitimate zeros that the instructors don't want to have converted to blanks so you know right that was the other problem <laughs> yeah. yeah i had thought of that as a potential problem but um i wonder if um i wonder if it would be possible for it to analyze like set last zeros to to null or something like set last zero grades the the most recently entered to zero grades to I mean, that, empty that's you know that's basically an undo undo the last yeah. stack right right but i mean to yeah. so that it wouldn't be something you have to do immediately but something you could do after other actions so it wouldn't have to know that that was the last thing you just did right yeah, I don't, well, yeah, in theory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was just trying to think of programmatically how it could be done because it's all spreadsheet based, like in the back end when you upload a spreadsheet or something. Database. Yeah, in the database. Uh, um, it gets a little tricky. Um, you yeah. Know, there's, and I think it warrants a conversation with the developers who are familiar with the back end and, um, <coughs> So we can get a better understanding of if if it's possible and um, and is this a priority for their attention? So um, I will I will be happy to to bring this up at the core team meeting next Tuesday for for input and if you know, Laura Sarah or Laura Geckler, you want to be there too to, to help with the conversation, that would be great. But in addition, I think it's also helpful to add our, you know, ideas and concerns as comments in the JIRA. That's, that's pretty important. So we have captured them um, in a more permanent way.
All right. Would you be able to elaborate on 40636? 4063. Who's, who's making that request? Sorry. Oh, sorry. That was one of them that I had sent over to you, and I was wondering if Laura Gackler could help me explain this one, too, if, if that's the one we're going to next. Otherwise, I'll stand down for a minute. The one I have in my list for next is 41052, which I think is a related JIRA to the one we were just descri describing, the great yeah. Can Zero. So we're going to skip that one. And yeah. then this next one I have is, uh, but I can jump to 40636 if you would like. It's, it's, it, there's no, um, no reason why we can't skip around. So I'll go ahead and paste that JIRA in for you guys and get it open. Sorry, I didn't mean to elbow that one in there. <laughs> Oh no, it's okay. It's your list, so you can you can decide. All right. So we've got assignments. The instructor role needs the ASN dot submit permission for grading, which is a change from Sakai eleven, and it looks like it was introduced in eleven four. Yeah, this one is really wicked. It's been biting Notre Dame all fall semester. Um, so it mostly rears its angry head when an instructor is using the ability to create an assignment that is non-electronic. In other words, they're probably going to be using that assignment, those instructions and so forth, to um, to start students on oral presentations. So at the time of the oral presentation, the instructor has Sakai open and makes comments and gives them a grade. Well, um, <laughs> it's hard to edit those grades because they don't actually appear since, since nothing has been actually submitted. If there were a submission, um, they would show up as being available to grade. But since there is no submission, they don't even show up as being available to grade. There's nothing there. Unless the instructor has this, um, this permission here where they can submit an assignment on behalf of the student, and then the system acts like, you know, that's something that they are just about to do when, in fact, that's not really what they want to do. They just want to grade the student. So that's what this one's about. It's, that's a little confused, at least I'm confused, but um, <laughs> maybe others aren't. So. Here, it, maybe we can explain how it presents itself. So the, if the faculty member, like uh, Laura mentioned, if the faculty does, if the instructor does not have the permission, uh, then they can't grade any students who don't have, who haven't actually physically submitted to the assignments tool because there's they don't appear on a screen anywhere for them to enter a grade. So by adding this permission, uh, when the instructor clicks on the grade link, it kind of creates this, uh, what are we calling it? It almost creates like a bucket, if you will. It creates some sort of I well, Earl, Earl calls those dummy submissions. Yeah, dummy submissions. It creates basically a screen as if the student had submitted so that the faculty member can enter a grade and enter their comments and save it. However, because it because Sakai has given them the permission to submit, if the student goes in then later and wants to, you know, if they have multiple submissions or something and decide to make a change to it, then it blocks them. It, it tells them that someone else is editing this assignment and you can't you can't do any work in it. it. It's it's really bad. It's really it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't. In this case, if you give the instructor permissions and they can grade before everyone's done with their assignments. But if you don't give them permission, they can't grade it. It's just really kind of a mess. I don't know if anyone else has encountered this at all, but as Laura mentioned, at, like every other week, we had to have long site reset these things because it was just creating a failure everywhere for students who are trying to submit their work. 
And of course they wait till the last minute. So it's a 10 o'clock at night kind of call a lot yeah. of times. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's really bad behavior. And, um, and so I, it sounds like maybe this was introduced with the back end changes that the cleanup that Earl did possibly. I know it's assigned to him. Yeah, but. no, I think that's when it happened, Tricia. Uh, and I know Earl's thinking about it for 19, no, 20. I think he's going to fix it for 20. But um, we think it should be backported yeah. to 12. Now, backporting is going to be a huge problem because, like you said, there are database changes. Mm -hmm. But that it needs to be addressed. I, I would call this a definitely critical um, Yeah, it, it really made Sakai feel um, unstable for quite a lot of our instructors yeah. because they were frequently having to call us saying, yeah, the students said they can't submit again and now we need to you know, do whatever it is you do. And it, granted, it takes two seconds um, for the fix to be done if you have you know, a developer there just kind of clearing out the dummy submissions, but you, you, you can't do that all the time, right. <laughs> nor should you, nor should you, so. Right, right. That's yeah. not a good way to manage it. <laughs> no, not, not really. Not really. <laughs> okay, so I just voted for this issue and I encourage everyone else. So the more votes we have also, I think, um, count towards, you know, getting attention. Um, I think we definitely need to raise this at a core team meeting if, if it hasn't already been discussed. I mean, it is assigned to Earl, but I don't know where this is in his list of priorities and and what other important things might be competing with it. So we might want to have a chance to talk to him about it directly. And um, Yeah, we almost need some sort of community documentation on the issue and its priority and what's currently been done. It's my understanding that um, What's currently been done in 12 to make it better than 11 is that the the um, the process of creating dummy submissions has somehow been sped up so that now I can't even explain it. That's why we, <laughs> so there's a temporary fix in place that's supposed to make it a little better until we can get it all fixed. That's about as well as I can explain it. And I would love okay. to at least have some documentation on what exactly is going on, what have the efforts been, and, and how can we fast track this to get the thing completely fixed? Right. And we are not seeing this behavior at all on 11X, right? That's, I'm, I just saw Sean's comment that, I guess that's the 11 maintenance branch on Nightly 2. I guess, I don't know. I was just thinking, I mean, I'm sure he went through our, our testing steps, but I don't know if he was able to um, encounter it because it, it takes a little bit of time for you to kind of, you know, submit as a student and then go back in as an instructor and then try it again. And it's it's kind of wonky. Once you trip over it once, you don't ever forget how it how it happens, but you really have to you right. really have to trip over to really see that, right. oh my gosh, this is just a, a showstopper. And I think really the comments here, the three comments we have in kind of help you understand what it is that the problem is more so than the description does. So. Right, okay. Thank you for the attention okay. on this, it's bad. Yeah, it really is, it really is. All right, so that's another one for core team for sure make myself a note uh okay thank you guys for bringing that to our attention as well um the next one i have on the list laura is 33997 i'll paste that into chat also and this is a ooh rounding of a grade percentage that is wrong. And this is in 11.4 on up. 
Now, I think this may have also been tackled and then a decision has been made in the meantime. What is what is happening is that, um, I don't know if you've got one of Ben's screenshots, but I think if you'd scroll up oh. and show his second screenshot, it shows you where the discrepancy is. And what happens is that, um, so what you're seeing in this tiny little sliver is of course the first column is the course grade, um, calculated course grade. The second numerical column is one of the grades. This, the third numerical column is another grade. And then the final column is the uh, category average. And what he noted was that um, the category average, that roll up column you get for a category, does not, does not sh correctly calculate um, to show because there's, there's only these two items, so the calculated course grade should match what the um, category shows, what the category course grade is. So he showed that it was an inaccurate roundup. But there's also a JIRA out there that shows that that calculated grade won't match, or I, I'm sorry, the category average um, column doesn't show a correct number if, say, one of the students' um, grade items has been dropped. So um, that JIRA has been worked out so that um, the student will see actually a different average for a category if they've got a dropped item than does the instructor. Oh, so yeah, I'm, that's yeah, that kind of worked. It. So I don't know if this is related to that or if it's just plain bad math that's happening in the category roll up column in general. Um, so I'm going to assume that for this example that we're seeing, this is the only category with items that have grades. Yeah, I believe it is for him. Yeah. Because otherwise we could argue that, you know, yeah. there are other categories, it will be different. But that's interesting. And I mean, even in the one above, it says 90%, and the category average is 95. So, yeah, and, and actually it looks like this must have other categories because this third student has a calculated grade, but no grades entered for the current category that we're seeing. So, well, he, his instructions do say create one category worth 100% of the grade. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's an oddity with that third student that we can't see well, I'm how he right. earned the grade. Maybe he just deleted his cursor is in that cell for that third student. Maybe mm -hmm. he just recently deleted and didn't save or something. I don't know. But uh, could be a grade override. Well, no, it's yeah. not because it's not bold. Yeah. Yeah, there's something that isn't explained in that one, but um <laughs> it's pretty um, yeah, it's pretty regularly happens this way. We have seen some very weird rounding stuff with display in tests and quizzes where sometimes the number is like 0.01 greater than the student's actual grade. Um, and I'm wondering if it's not the same situation here where it's a weird rounding thing that is causing it to appear different numbers in different places. Um, I'm not sure what you were talking about, Laura, with the displaying differently for the student. That wouldn't be a dropped grade. That would be a hidden grade where it displays differently from the student in the um, in the category yes, average that's column. Right. That's, that's, a, right. that's a hidden grade, not a dropped. Mm -hmm. That's grade. right. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I don't right. I don't think that should affect this because that's a display thing just for the student. So, oh, it still results in a B. I didn't even notice that. Oh, yeah, sure did. Okay, I see. So, the rounding doesn't, the letter grade doesn't match the percentage that's showing up in the calculated grade because of a rounding issue. Yeah. Interesting. And yeah. so also this percentage here, yeah, it's just rounding to the no decimal places. So 
That is interesting. So it's probably just a difference in logic between the yeah, two columns? It, so it looks like the calculated letter grade is actually is accurately reflecting this um, category average over here. But it's this percentage of the calculated course grade, the 90% that makes it look wrong. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't think the student would argue, you know, <laughs> they're like, oh, cool. Okay, I got a 90 instead of an 89.99. I'm going with it, but. Yeah, but, and yet the letter grade is a B and not an A. And so they would argue with that. I'm sure. Definitely, yeah. Okay, so it's just, a, a, I think it's a, you know, it probably isn't too hard. In fact, they could compare how this occurs in Gradebook Classic to figure out how to fix it. I'm guessing. It's a problem, definitely. I'm just going to get my vote too. Um, and so this is marked as critical. It's in Steve's queue. Uh, last updated. In Certainly, any time a grade book seems to show math discrepancies, people panic. And it's not good. Yeah. No. That's, that's a bad thing. All right. So, looking at our um, 11.2, our grade book is showing, our grade book NG is showing two decimal places in the uh, course grade column. So, that rounding might have happened later. Um, or I'm looking, we may have adjusted it. Yeah, maybe, we may have adjusted it. Maybe it is just a, a matter of displaying the two decimal places. Um, in the course grade percentage that appears that is displayed, and then and then it will match because it looks yeah. like it's not showing any decimal places, and therefore it's going to round up. Well, right. now uh, what's that previous picture show? Because I think it's got like it's showing decimal places where. So the category says it's 89.75, but for some reason the calculated course grade says 89.87, which I think oh, is that's interesting. <laughs> that's a really interesting ah. one. <laughs> yeah, that, that does look similar than, to... A little more than just decimal places. That's yeah. Different. Something weird. That does look similar to what we've seen in Samago, though, in tests and quizzes, where there was that precision issue with um, it displaying like certain students grades would be like an extra 0 0.01 points mm. and then it would send that to the uh, grade book too so they'd have like an extra 0 0.01 it wasn't very impactful on the particular students grades but sure, sure. but again you just you're seeing these percentages mm -hmm. and they don't seem to match and why and questioning now all the numbers in the grade book and yeah yeah, I okay. sure would. I'd be going, what is going on here? And which number should I leave? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, I've made that a note to bring up to the core team as well. Okay, moving on. Uh, Gradebook spreadsheet does not update without some co coaxing, and there's three it related issues to this. Um, and the first one is, 40853. All right, let's get back over here. The display points. When updating the settings of a grade book for the grade release rules, there's an option to display the final greatest point. Basically, there are several times when you make uh, changes, particularly if it has to do with categories and how points display or things like that. You really, you actually have to force the gradebook page to refresh completely for those changes to show up, which isn't going to be um, intuitive or even expected by our more um, adept 
gradebook users. There are several things that uh, Charles and mm. Ben and I noticed when we were playing around with categories, moving them around or changing details with it, or as in this one, changing what's going to display for the uh, grade, calculated grade. You kind of have to force the gradebook to update to a fresh view to show your changes. It's very frustrating. Oh. I think we've noticed that too. Okay. So it needs to auto refresh. Yes. Yes. At a minute. Yep. I'm just going to put a comment. And Trisha, and probably the next one is very much like that. The deleting the category doesn't update the spreadsheet until you, do, you know, there, there are a couple of these that are kind of the same thing. You have really an auto refresh would be best. So I don't want to take up all our time with okay. gradebook then, beefs. Then, but. Right. We can skip talking about those unless we won't have time to come back. How about that? Because it sounds like. That sounds good. Yeah. All of those issues are similar. Mm-hmm. All right, then Tiffany, we're going to move on to some of your Samago feedback dependencies that um, should be removed. And let's look at the first one. I don't know if we need to look at all of them individually. Um, I've got 40970. And this is to remove the dependency between displaying questions and overall quiz feedback. All right, right. so there yeah. yeah, so there are a couple of um, types of feedback that instructors can can put comments in. They can put comments, a uh, general comments on um, the student's entire performance for the quiz and they can put comments at the question level. Mm -hmm. um, so the instructor who requested this wanted to put comments for the student's assessment overall uh, to comment on their essay questions. But he didn't want to reveal the questions to the student at the same time because he didn't want to reveal the multiple choice and true false questions and answers. He only wanted to give them comments, general comments. And the problem is that in order to give them any comments at all, the instructor must also release questions, including those he wants to reuse on a following exam. So this is a, a request to dissociate that grader's comments that's at the top level um, from the question display. Does that make sense? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, do I have a screenshot in there? No, you don't. No, OK. So you might want to add a yeah. couple to illustrate. That might help. Um, yeah. We had a request for this actually uh, just a couple weeks ago too, Tiffany. So, yeah. Yeah, it's um, th there. The graders' comments that are at the top level of the assessment also appear in the gradebook. Um, assuming it also has some refresh issues, but in theory, mm -hmm. they appear in the gradebook. Um, whereas the comments made for an individual question, of course, appear with that question, which makes sense that you'd need the questions to be visible for the comments on a question to be released. Um, but, uh, but this is the top level assessment comments um, to the student. Okay. Now, this is Terry. I think I think this matters partly because of the security thing that Tiffany cut kind of glossed over. If you want those questions secure for future iterations of the quiz or other, you know, the final exam or something like that, you need to be able to still stealth the content of those questions. Otherwise, you have students doing a screenshot and publishing the questions. Which they could in theory do anyway. When well, they yeah, yeah but during. this is just another place for that to come out. Oh, yeah, I've got the they, I've got the question right. and the answer all right here. Right, and then at, during a time when they're not under pressure to, to complete it in a right. certain time period. So. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the instructor in this case was 
going to not reuse his essay questions, but was going to reuse all his other questions. And that's why he only wanted to give feedback on the essay questions. Additionally, you can add an attachment uh, at the top level of the assessment. Uh, so he could add an attachment with their essay questions and his comments in that attachment and not have to reveal the question at all because the question would be in the attachment. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, that's a workaround for sure. Well, no, it's not a workaround. That's the problem. He can't do it without releasing the questions. Oh. That's precisely the problem. He cannot give them that feedback on just those two questions that are essay questions without giving them all of the other questions visible on the page. And why should it be that complicated? Why it do we... Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying it should be. I'm yeah, so that's why it needs to be dissociated so that he can, you know, give them feedback on their test overall and not not require him to show them the questions. Okay. And so if folks are interested in having this prioritized, you probably want to vote on it and answer comments um, of, you know, if you're seeing it at your schools and if it's creating problems um, to help ensure that this gets attention. All right, the next one is similar 40527. Dissociate answer key from correct and correct. So do we need to go through these? In detail, Tiffany, I mean, it's another um, dissociation, or, or maybe we do. I don't know. I mean, they're, they're different dependencies. Um, in this yeah. case, I think it's pretty straightforward. There's a correct response and incorrect response that are only visible with the answer key also visible. This instructor wants to allow multiple submissions on his quiz, so he wants to show them if it's right or wrong without showing them the answer. Mm-hmm. And so he wants the little check mark or X mark to show up without showing whether or not, you know, show without showing the answer key. You know, the, the correct answer is A instead of, you know, just telling them they got it wrong. They got to go back and redo it. So I think that's pretty straightforward. Okay. And then three, four, three, seven, two. Three, four, three, seven, two. Remove or clarify dependency between question level, graders, comments, and student response. Right. So this is another um, issue where there's a dependency. Uh, in this case, the instructor can put graders' comments on a question, uh, but they have to release the students answer to that question. And this is, again, a situation where the instructor wanted to put comments like, like, you know, you got this wrong, but you should look at chapter blah, blah, blah to find the answer. Um, and they didn't want to release what the answers were um, or the, what the student selected so that they can, you know, again, make the student go look up the answers uh, and find mm -hmm. that information on their own. And this is also unclear because in the settings, there's no warning that you must have graders comments enabled to allow these particular question level comments. So ideally the, the dependency would be removed. Uh, all the, the minor, less, less exciting alternative would be to show them some text to say that uh, once they enable that option that they also need to Able the student response to make that feedback visible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be, I think, helpful to have a comparison. I mean, obviously, the screenshot I'm looking at right here is the instructor's view. Yeah. That doesn't have the answer key. What does the student's view look like? It's different. Well, it's it's essentially the same thing, um, but they don't have the typing box. <laughs> it just says comments and whatever that comment they, was. In the in this case, the key. well, in this case, the student can't see any of it because they haven't enabled the student response. 
response. That's the problem. Like none of that stuff will show up if student response oh. has not been enabled. <laughs> It'll just show them the question with an empty bubble. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I, I can add the student screenshot too. I mean, it's basically just nothing is showing up. <laughs> yeah, it might be useful to to say, you know, to show the way it is now and the way you'd like it to be. Mm -hmm. I think visuals, you know, there's a lot of steps and information in this description, um, but it might help developers understand it a little more quickly. Mm -hmm. It would help me if it were me. Okay, so let's move on. Allowing students to have their answers from a previous quiz submission pre-populated in a retake or new submission. So that right. is Jira 34754. And uh, yeah, this has been requested some time back. You want to elaborate yeah, on it? Yeah, it's been requested quite a bit, uh, actually, in different iter iterations, I think. Um, but many of the JIRAs were closed out of date. Um, but basically, when you allow a student to retake a test, it always gives them a totally new, frank, fresh, blank test. Um, these instructors, in many cases, if a student encounters a technical issue while they're taking a test, the instructor doesn't want to make them have to retake the whole test. They just want them to retake, you know, fill in the questions that they couldn't answer in the time allotted because their their computer messed up or something like that. Um, the other situation is where an instructor wants a student to retake a test because they want multiple attempts. So it's like a homework assignment, for example, um, and they want the student to only answer the questions they got wrong. Uh, in the retake. But the problem is they can't see all of their answers pre-populated in the retake. They have to like print off their feedback and you know, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. And also they have to see the answer key to know what was wrong. And the instructor may not want to reveal that because they want the student to retake it and <laughs> redo it. Yeah. So. There's actually a technical way to do this in the back end. If the instructor edits a test, they can allow a student to, um, they can allow all the students to retake it uh, such that all their answers are pre-populated. The problem is that it also requires all students to retake the assessment. So like all of their submissions disappear and it forces them to resubmit. So it's not just for on a one per student basis. It's a, a whole class. So, and I see you have a comment to that effect here. And then um, we have talked about this before, it looks like. And yeah, so, I think so. Instructor only wants to, so, so an option to select students who should retake. I mean, that's a right. possible shortcut. Well, so the problem is that when you allow the retake, you can't allow them to see the students' previous answers during that retake. The point is that we'd like them to be able to see those answers yeah. when you do that. Yeah. yeah. Would they do it question by question or just at the beginning of the quiz? I'm just kind of reading through this right now to see. So it would just show them all of their previous answers when they're doing the retake. It would just include all the previous answers by default, and then the student could edit them and resubmit. Would autofill. Okay. Yeah, autofill all of their previous answers. Is this something where the instructor would have a choice about right. allowing that? Or okay. Yeah. Because yeah, the in point the wrong is wrong situation. To have a yeah. Okay. The wrong situation, it could just enable guessing on the student's part. And, yeah. Right. Right. The point is to have it be an option and that's why in my comment I said you know have a checkbox um, to allow this or not allow it uh, of course disabled by default um, and do you think that if we randomize questions or draw them from pools that it would probably not be available for them 
No, I think it should. I mean, it would be available for them because if you're doing the edit and regrade forcing, it, it will be available for them. Um, the, the randomization happens at the time of the take. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, I guess that depends on how your settings are. Yeah. But it should, it should if, hmm, maybe it wouldn't be available for those random draws that also have randomization on a per take basis. Okay. So sure. that would that would have to be a restriction, I guess. Sure. I mean, I think I think faculty can understand that the more complex you make this, the less options you have. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it, it could be done for if there's a single randomization of question order within a, a test. But if there's a random draw and the random draw redraws every take, because that's yeah. a separate option. Sure. Uh, then in that case you wouldn't be able to do this. Yeah, this is a this is a good Jira. Yeah. So I I don't know if we really have any um, dedicated Jamago developers because um, this is certainly I think would qualify as a new feature. Oh yeah, definitely is a new feature. Yeah. But I think some of that code could be repurposed that exists back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We Probably. scared them all off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Tiffany. These are all very good and Laura as well. Um, and I've noted ones that I'm going to bring up to the core team next week. Um, any other thoughts or comments? Uh, let's see. Josh added that it would be handy for institutions that experience issues with their exam proctoring software. <laughs> yes, they are humdingers for sure. Thank you guys so much for um, bringing these up for us to review and um, hopefully we can make some headway on at least some of them. Um, any other comments or questions before we adjourn? Okay, I just wanted to uh, remind everyone that on January 16th, we are, I uh, believe Wilma's going to give us an overview of um, all the feedback that she's collected on Lessons 2.0. Um, so that'll be really interesting and helpful. Right, uh, yeah, we've um, kind of, we were summarizing all the, the yeah. stuff that we collected. So we'll give you a summary of, of the, overall findings. Great. And so we'll look forward to that in a couple of weeks. And then I'm anticipating on February 6th, the Kai Camp will have just concluded the previous week. So we probably would have some outcomes and updates from that to share on February 6th. So I've gone ahead and made that a tentative agenda item for February 6th. We do have February 20th open. So looking for suggestions um, for that. Um, so please let me know or Matt or Wilma, let one of us know um, if you have something you'd like to talk about um, or present on, um, that would be super helpful. So thank you so much everybody and uh, good to talk to all of you so early in the new year and uh, hope that your week goes well and um, we're off doing more great things, I hope. Thanks everybody, thanks Trisha. Thanks, we'll see you next time. Thanks everybody, happy new year. Happy new year, bye.